Hey everyone and welcome to this month's tutorial. I'm doing another flamingo painting again, seeing as the last was very popular. Uh, all of the supplies that I'm using in today's video can be found in the description below. And if you're interested in purchasing this piece, then you can also uh, shoot me a message and let me know that as well. So starting off with a flat medium sized brush, I'm going to be starting with the background here using some phyllo blue and a mix of uh, some neon sort of blue as well into that, uh, just to give it more of a glow than just normal phyllo blue would. As you can see, I'm just kind of slapping on the paint, uh, painting around my sketch and then roughly using my fingers to blend it together. I'm not too worried about how it looks here because I'm gonna be blending it much more smoothly in a second using a mop brush. And I'm also using a watercolor mop brush because watercolor mop brushes are a lot softer and I find that they tend to shed a little less. So that's why I prefer to use those over acrylic or oil mop brushes. Uh, they're softer the brush, the smoother the blend you're going to get. Then going in with the mop brush and the uh, water bottle spray just to help keep the paint on the canvas wet and just going around. I'm actually using like multiple mop brushes here because I find that after a while of using one mop brush it starts to pick up too much paint and it starts to get really streaky so I have a couple of mop brushes on hand ready to go for this. Here I'm using the mop brush to put on some white paint and blend some cloud-like forms into the background. And then I also um, sprayed a little bit of sort of white sprinkles across the canvas just to give uh, more of an abstract effect to the painting itself. And then really starting to solidify some of those clouds in the background uh, with more white paint and again another mop brush. When you're using mop brushes, you want to be really light with, with your brush pressure. You don't want to push too hard, otherwise you're going to get that streaky effect. Imagine you are sort of feather dusting uh, and you're going really, really light in circular motions around your canvas. Adding in some neon pink here, also adding in some drips for the abstract effect that I'm going for for this painting, uh, just to give more of a surreal aspect as well. before splitting on some of the neon color and then moving on to the actual flamingo itself once the background has dried. Now I'm gonna be doing the base layer first. I always start with a base layer in all my animal paintings. This means the base layer, uh, sometimes I call it the value layer. I'm just putting down the basic colors and basic shapes of the animal or subject that I'm working on. So starting with a dark mix here, just kind of outlining his body because it got a little bit lost in the blending process of the background. And using some of the crimson red, I used a little bit of that neon pink in there just to give it a really pink tone. Might be a little bit hard to pick up in the camera. But just figuring out where my light source is coming from and putting the shadows in accordingly. With my base layers or my value layers, I typically start with three different colors. My dark colors, which is what I'm using now, my mid-tones, which will be the next layer, and then my brighter tones, uh, but not the brightest, because I wanna save the brightest for later. So just mapping out the shadows, mapping out the feathers, as well as figuring out where the light is coming from in this particular painting. Next, moving on to the mid-tones, like I said, this is a nice mix of pretty much that crimson red, that neon pink, and a little bit of white to lighten up the color. You can see I'm just carefully leaving some small gaps where the brighter tone is gonna go and fill in the rest of that. I want to make sure that I keep the definition of all those feathers really clear to me so that I can easily find each feather as I go throughout the painting. Then using same brush as before and just mixing even more white into that mixture we've been using and just filling in any white tones. You will notice I am brushing 
in the direction that the feathers would naturally grow in and this is very important if you're painting birds or any animal that has fur or feathers or some sort of texture to it that you pay attention to the direction that the fur or the feathers grows in naturally because this is going to give you a more realistic look to your animals. So I've made my light source come from the top right direction of the canvas and I'm also doing a line of that uh, pale colour on the very back edge of the flamingo's neck just to really accentuate the highlight and the shape of the body. Now I'm going in with an even darker reddish pinkish colour, just deepening up those shadows. Again, I want to keep things really defined so I can easily see the shapes of those individual feathers. Once that layer has dried, I'm going in with this rake brush. Rake brushes are, again, my favourite brush to use simply because they are great for fur or feather textures. Now just a little tip for when you're using rake brushes. They are uh, splayed out like a rake, so the brush tip at the very end is very thin and I find that it helps to water down my paint a little bit just so it doesn't make the individual uh, hairs stick together so much. That way you can get that really fine, wispy, textured look that you're going for and not have huge globs of paint on your canvas and it just sort of ruins the texture. So again, being really careful to pay attention in this stage how the direction of the feathers, the direction of uh, the neck, everything is going. And I'm also adding a lighter layer on top, just mixing even more white as I go and just being uh, a little more sparing with it as we work through the painting itself. We're going to want this layer to completely dry and once it has we're going to start the glazing layer. Glazing is one of my favourite things to do in painting, it just really brings your animals to life. I'm going to be glazing several different colours onto my flamingo starting with this burnt umber. This is just going to warm him up and give him more of a natural earthy tone. Uh, most animals, even humans, have brown tones in them. It's just a natural colouring that we all have. I'm also going to be glazing on some of that phyllo blue as well as that neon pink because I really want this flamingo to be super super vibrant with the colour. Just going in on a few layers, you want to work fairly quickly with glaze as it dries even faster than acrylics do and if you accidentally paint the same spot over and over again with glaze, it can actually end up lifting off the glaze so you do have to work a little quicker with it. And then next for the body, going back with my rake brush again and this time I'm using a really, really pale pink. It almost looks white uh, on camera here and I'm just adding back in some of that texture we got lost and some few defining areas, uh, the brightest areas on our flamingo. And like I said, I'm sort of backlighting the flamingo a little bit by adding a line of that white texture down the back of his neck. You want to be a little more sparing with your lighter layers as you go through the painting just so it gives a more realistic look to your bird. Using this uh, pointed roundish brush here, I'm going to start on the beak using some of a sort of dark grey, not too dark. And just like we did with the flamingo body, starting with our darkest layer working up to the light, I'm mapping out the shadows, thinking again about how that light source is going to be affecting his beak. And just blending those in a little more smoothly with my finger as I go not forgetting to go in with a detail brush and add in the black lines, filling them in with a bigger brush as I go as well. I'm adding a little bit of grey into that black area just because I want it to look a little less uh, super dark and super flat. I want some dimension to the beak. Going in with a cadmium yellow for the eye and adding in that pupil. Make sure you add a few dots of white around the eye itself as well as on the pupil to really bring your flamingo to life. 
and then also adding those slight highlights with a detailed brush and some pure white onto the black parts of the beak so that he really looks like he's got a shiny beak. I added a tiny touch of neon to his beak just to sort of reflect his surroundings a little bit. And then the final stage of this painting is going over a few of the areas where I've painted, adding back in some of the clouds. I wanted this flamingo to look like he was floating in the clouds, so I'm adding uh, just a bunch of clouds using that water bottle again to spray on and uh, keep the paint workable so I can go in with mop brushes and just really soften the clouds up. I also added some of that neon pink to keep in theme with my flamingo and then added some dripping effects again with the white and some more pink just to uh, keep that surreal vibe going. I tried it on the beak and I didn't like how it looked so I ended up removing that completely. And then I added some spray or speckles with the brushes and some watered down paint just to finalize and finish off my flamingo. And that will conclude our tutorial for now. I hope you enjoyed watching the painting come together and perhaps learned some new techniques. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials or the kinds of animals that you want to learn how to paint, please leave those in the comments below. I am more than happy to take suggestions for things like that. Don't forget to check out the links below in the description as well as I have the supplies used for this video in the description as well. Don't forget I've got courses available if you are interested in learning more from me and I hope you're all having a good time and I will see you all very soon. Looking to learn how to paint or improve your art skills, then head over to the Intuitive Artist Academy for courses and workshops that will guide you through your own painting journey. I will teach you the techniques you need to create your own masterpiece and works of art that you are proud of. They're fun, easy to follow, and will leave you feeling inspired and ready to tackle your next big painting.